Hello, everyone, and welcome to my very first Enshrouded build. Um, and this will be my submission for the build competition that is going on right now. Worked really hard over the past couple days to wrap this up, um, way more than I intended to. Kind of ready for a break, but there is a lot here, a lot to go through. Um, this is just going to be a video tour, not a guide, not nothing like that. Um, maybe I'll come back and talk through it in more depth eventually, but for right now, let's just go through the quick and dirty tour, show you the whole thing from start to finish. This is going to feature a bunch of gardens, three houses, some underground caverns, some jumping puzzles, a giant bridge, and more. This over here was the first house I built. It's a little villa. We'll get a better vantage point for... Actually, let's go give it a, give it a good vantage point right now. Let's zip on over. Let's zip up here. You can see what we're looking at down there. That's the first villa I created there on the left. And I kind of built both of these buildings in conjunction with each other. Let's glide back over and check them out. Turn this one into the carpenter's house. Got a little banquet table here on the first floor. Um, experimented with brick and brick is just a lovely, lovely material. Especially when it blends and you stagger it like that little outdoor patio kitchen and then this was the walkway entryway that comes that connects back to that garden where we just were going downstairs we've got our carpenter friend and um, this was actually the very last room of this entire build that I finished I had no idea what to do with it and as you'll see up above um, the key feature and inspiration for this entire build like most of my builds back in valheim is to kind of just blend it with nature as much as possible keeping it really organic and it turns out i could not get away from that habit even in the carpenter's workshop got a little bathroom in here which uh, i think this kind of looks like a mirror which ended up on looking pretty cool um toilet behind a little bathtub shower some fake water best we can do here natural vibes I'd take a bath there all right let's go back up top go upstairs in this villa as we make our way up nice little cozy balcony we can sit and read and then we got the carpenter's house bedroom his own little table another fireplace with a big chimney nice high ceiling some balconies and dormers up top and then that cool little um, roof extension that you saw from the outside up there. And we've got two little bed sections, a little under nook here. And then a loft up top with a cheaper bed. Maybe that's for some guests, some visitors. Got your very own desk. Um, some more candles, buckets, lots of decorations. Just get a good look around. I'm going to keep moving because there's a lot to go through. Front balcony. Can't zoom the camera out any further, but you get the get the gist of it here. Just big and clean. And then vines overgrowing everything. Challenging little roof to do um, with a variety of roof pieces up there. Um, making good use of the, uh, I forget what they're called, the two different tiles. The clay tiles and then the, the regular tiles. Like you can make those cool curved arches chimney all the way up top and let's just hop back down to where we started in the courtyard here and let's carry through the transition um, all right in this in-between little section another outdoor chimney more outdoor seating a little nice little cozy nook I love nooks can't get enough of them some storage underneath another chimney fireplace outdoor with some benches um, floating candles will come back here at night looks really cool I wanted this to be an outdoor space um, but I wanted some shade so I just did some rafters and I was just trying to use different materials so I used a tar covered wood which I thought was, um, was added a good contrast it was just different it's generally a pretty ugly material but um, when used in a manner like this I thought it kind of looked pretty cool um, and yep added vines in between like 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 mad coming into this this one is kind of I would say inspired by maybe Professor Sprout's little uh, her her office in in Harry Potter um, certainly not actually 
based on or not actually anything Harry Potter related, but just inspired with the vibe. Uh, a lot of plant beds um, and just a lot of outdoor windows. That's just the, the idea I had in my mind when I decided to build with this. I was just trying to build open, nice long rectangle. Didn't intend to use the brick, but once I put it in there, I thought it looked super nice. Um, make use of our little ladder. Come up on the balcony. We can see from the top. Actually, we can even hop out there. It's safe to walk on. And you can take a look at it from there. But let's keep moving. Let's keep moving. And now we're coming up to one of the cool features of the build. This giant bridge I built. Um, and I add a lot of detail to it, too. As you can see, the, uh, the wooden trim and the little, little slits all at set intervals. Um, and we've got what looks to be a jumping puzzle ahead of us. Um, I know we wanted this to be fun. This is enshrouded, and unlike Valheim, which is what I'm most familiar building in, there's no building integ the structural integrity system, so we're free to just create floating pieces, which is something that's completely different and unique for me, as well as free to terraform and create cozy little caves like this without all of the ground above it just chopping down. So I tried to play around with that as much as possible, and it was a lot of fun. Um, so just continuing with the garden vibes, I just cut out little basically um, planters, plant beds on the side of this mountain on this hill here. And closed it with some fences and some firefly lanterns. The firefly farming was, was real for this build. As you can see, I've got little lanterns on all of these things. So you can hop up here, hop up here, s fail my swing across. Nope, I barely made it. If there's a problem, you might have noticed my e the E disappeared on that because I think it transitioned to picking a plant instead of that. So challenge mode jumping puzzles. Now I created these little islands all the way around because as I kept doing my build, I realized I wanted to get strategic vantage points to view it from. I wanted to make sure the houses looked good from every angle. And there were certain angles where it looked really, really striking. Actually, depending where the sun is, I'm gonna go transition over the, uh, the bridge side in a section. But here is our house on top of the mountain. And we can hop down there and go through that real quick. But continuing our jumping puzzle, this actually takes you all the way across. Another swing, that's a tough jump. Double jump is recommended, but it is doable without double jump. I try to make sure from that. Here's another vantage point where you can see this mount, this house on top of the mountain here. Overgrown with greenery. Um, I really wanted to create that effect. Now we can just step down here, step down, step down. And now this is being supported here. It's all terraformed. I actually, as my house up top grew, I needed to build the ledge out much further so I just had this giant rock kind of floating in the sky and I'm like what the heck do I do with that do I make it look natural um, and like build rock all the way down um, this is perhaps a questionable part of my build but as I started uh, getting into some of the the mystical water stuff um, with the luminous growth uh, I think there's kind of an element of mystery and mystique and magic going on in this whole enchanted mountain forest build with all these floating platforms so to me there's like there's energy in this crystals that's the story that my i was going with here and that's kind of helping support like this you know all this floaty technology stuff so we'll swing all the way back around double double jump is oh Good thing I've got that little anchor right there. There is a tree right there which impedes your jumping a little bit. Oh. All right, and this is where our flame shrine is. And this is at the top of the waterfall. And we're back to where we were looking down before. So we'll, let's start from here and we'll go into inside this mountain cave. We'll go down there in a second. We're gonna go to the bridge. I want to get while the sun is over here toward the west I want to get this shot right here to me this is my favorite shot I'm gonna turn off the HUD my favorite shot in the whole build right here when the sun is lighting up this house from this angle through this bridge it just looks phenomenal I'm very very I couldn't be more pleased with that have this little anchor up here just so you can see the whole house from this angle now this is the edge of the build. I turn my HUD back on. 
open this up, can't build any further here. Um, so I just try to, try to create the suggestion of there's gonna be a road travels up that mountain and maybe there's, I have ambitions to make another castle up there or something crazy, but this is what we got for right now. Love this house from this face. And actually let's just zip up here so you can get a closer look at the, the detailing and the layers and the staggering. And just, I wanted this house to be super funky with roofs just jutting out in all different directions. Oh, as we accidentally dropped into there. So we'll go back through here. Remember, this was just uh, our kind of entryway. Um, let's actually come back up here in a second. I just, just want to... <laughs> Trap doors in this game are incredible. And look how smooth that looks. Sorry, I, I, I'm gonna, I know I talk a lot in my videos. I just can't help it. Um, this looks so slow and slick. The way it just contracts through there, it's, it's awesome. Um, this is just an underground cavern. It weaves in a little bit with um, some of my gardens that were on this side of, underneath the bridge, if you can remember when we were over there in the, uh, the greenhouse. Um, coming back down here, just try to create like a scaffolding feel, like, you know, wood is supporting it and, you know, con under construction and storage and stuff. That's why the, the regular wood looks really good for a little scaffolding like that. And then this is underneath, underneath that greenhouse section over here. And now we're back to this very first house that we showed you. So let's just travel all the way back up and let's actually check out the house on top of the mountain. See, there, there's so many different ways you can approach it. I try to make it as fun and like meandering as possible. Um, so there's not really a set linear way for me to go about showcasing this, but let's just explore. This ends up on being a spare bedroom. I got like little recessed lighting back there with some plants, keeping that nature theme. Um, just a bed chilling here, some storage underneath. And here is what would be the front entrance, or I don't know if you want to call this the front entrance or the back entrance of this house. Again, this was from this perspective here. Here's our full house. Now we're going to check it out. Go up the front door, and the first room is the kitchen. And here we have our farmer, big windows, little uh, recessed patio area overlooking the bridge where you can watch the sunset and have dinner. Um, little washing station, and this was a happy little mistake with the windows. Um, I built up here specifically because of this giant tree. Let's see if we can go outside and just take a look at the tree real quick. Giant, giant tree. They make the trees so huge in this game. So that was gonna be a prominent feature of this. Um, and as I tried to build windows here, I wanted like to be able to see the tree and build around it a little bit. The tree's hitbox actually extends out much further than the, vi the tree graphic itself. So the windows kind of started placing in this staggered way and it was funky and I decided to, to just go with it. I liked it. So I put some lighting behind it. It lights up at night and it looks pretty cool. Um, I'm going to turn the HUD back off just to get a cleaner view of everything. Soak in the scenery. Try to decorate as best I could. There's so many cool little um, knickknacks and doodads to decorate with. You can set a whole table. No food yet, as far as I can tell. You can't add food onto tables, but yeah. Come into the second room and we've actually got blacksmith actually I think I recalled my blacksmith back home so let's bring him back to where he belongs there we go this was not my operating base this is the base I literally just built this so it hasn't been a functioning base for me yet so there's Oswald's little shop um, and a little bit of a living room situation a lot more growth you're gonna see growth in plants everywhere um, I love building like into the walls. I chip a little bit off the middle of a corner and I put a like, little plant in there and it just kind of really adds a lot of greenery to the room. It feels really cool. Um, he's got his own little patio out here where, with some kilns um, or yeah, and some under storage. And we can go up to the second level. We got these nice big tall windows as we go up. And we're into the library. Turn the 
2D back off. Book farming, I am so glad <laughs> keen developers changed the materials for books so you can actually craft a whole bunch of books. Um, I stacked a couple of shelves on top of each other, and this is the room. You've probably seen other builders do this at this point. They use the palm wood um, that works really, really well with the book bookshelves. Candle lighting in here. Yes, it's a fire hazard, but you know, aesthetic is greater than safety. It's more important. Um, this is back facing that platform over there where you get the nice view of this house. Um, Got one little more staircase. Brings you up to a balcony here. Oh, and perfect, it's nighttime. We are gonna go check out the night in a second. Um, let me zoom out, there we go. We're so zoomed in. So you get to examine the details. I like, there's a lot of just adding stone, like actual stone, the ground dirt stone on top of the, the, the building material block stone itself. Um, and just experimenting with a whole bunch of different materials and just trying to infuse nature and everything. And then through to the last room, we're back in front of our big tree. We gotta be able to view the tree from the upstairs bedroom as well. We just got a nice little bedroom using the palm wood furniture. I tried to use the different furniture sets and a rear balcony here, which looks like it could use some lighting. So that'll be on my agenda after this, but this is above that kitchen, above the dining room, looking at the bridge. All right, now let's, let's exit. Let's just fly off this balcony because you can fly an entrouded. Not that you can see where you're going, but I got there. All right, this is the intended entry road to the settlement on the ground floor and at nighttime I thought it looked super cool um, I didn't know how this would work and I've actually since I've seen some other submissions uh, come through in the past couple days where I see other builders with the same idea using this um, uh, this, this blue fluorescent block as fake water um, you know, actually a little story about this, if we were to zip back at the top. That is not the intended. At one time, where that flame shrine is above the waterfall, was a tower. <laughs> and the toughest build decision I made during this build was to tear down that entire tower I had a whole tower built, but what I realized from right here, when I looked up, I wanted to be able to enjoy the view of that build, but the tower blocked the view of the cool house that I was building behind it. So I tore it down and then late at night, lying in bed, 3 a.m., I had the thought, what if I built a waterfall going down the mountain right there instead? And woke up the next morning and tried it out and this is the result a little bit of a pandora water action um trail just meanders underneath underneath our uh, greenhouse area and then i just kind of ended it you need to end your spaces everywhere so i kind of just ended it with a little um a little pool area figured it just pulled right here throw plants in the background to kind of indicate you're not intended to go any further. This is the end of the line. Um, the water pools here and we got all this mycelium overgrowth. Um, just lighting things up and illuminating things. This game's lighting at night is so stinking beautiful. I can't get over it. So now we're back at the very beginning where I started if we were to go into back into our carpenter's house back into that front patio looking up like look at how lit up and nice this looks from every direction i can't get over the lighting in this game it's incredible i'm gonna turn my hud back on just so i can make sure i'm targeting this thing and i'm not picking plants picking plants is a big problem i've been having all right because we got one more secret in this build which is 
hidden cave behind the waterfall. And that is where our friend the alchemist lives. Chalk this up to 3 a.m. ideas. Hidden cave behind the waterfall. Now, alchemist chilling in here with all of his stuff. Threw a well in here and it's kind of like a, a mycelium well. It's not a water well. This is a magic, magical well. Um, hunter gear and uh, peripherals here, but no hunter. Actually, I need to bring the hunter to this, this encampment. I haven't done that yet. And then this was one final thing. Got to use our, our hidden bookcase somewhere, right? Just created a little trail back down. So the waterfall, you don't have to suicide out of the waterfall in order to get out of here. You actually can walk back down. And I did create a little entrance here. The astute viewer will have noticed when we entered our camp over here that there was also something beckoning your attention over in this direction. So that like fireworks going on up there. Yeah, so the, the, you could have gotten up to the hidden camp behind the waterfall this way as well. All right, I think, I feel like I might be missing something, but I think that covers everything. Let's just go back to where we started and look up at night. Bask in the beautiful lighting of this game. Like, holy cow, I just... I'm, I'm a little bit in awe. The building takes some getting used to in this game coming from Valheim, um, which Valheim is like basically one of my, my absolute favorite games of all time. Um, but you can really do some stuff in this game. So I'm putting my stamp on this, calling it a day. Um, this is my submission for the, the build contest. I will be uploading this video shortly. Thank you guys so much for watching. Excited to see everybody else's build in this. All right, cheers.